three, two, one. Welcome, everybody, to the Stay Weird Show, a show that celebrates human individuality because we think normal is boring. I'm your host, Jack, and I'll be meeting with a diverse range of guests from around the globe for your enjoyment. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and most of all, stay weird. Yeah, stay weird, motherfucker. You gotta love the rain, not. You don't like it. Okay, I know we need it, and I know my cows get fatter with it, but my whole life is outdoors, apart when I'm asleep. So, uh, yeah, muddy boots. Um, yeah, wet boots, cold, wet, no, the outdoors not my thing, <laughs> working outdoors when it's raining is not my thing, and that's what you got to do, so, and I hate wearing raincoats, and I hate wearing welly boots, so i got wet boots. <laughs> <laughs> what about sleeping with the rain? Oh yeah, that's perfect, rain on a tin roof, gold. Wicked, dude. That's, yeah. Alright, so I'll introduce us here. Um... Welcome to the Stay Weird Podcast. This is episode number one. I'm Jack and I'm here with... Dan. Dane. Um, we're out at Kenilworth and I met Dane a couple of weeks ago. Yep. At that Terra Firma cook-up. Terra Firma yep. cook-up, yep. At uh, Kenilworth Homestead, yeah. And how long have you lived out here for? Oh, it has to be over 15 years. Yeah, maybe 20. Lost count. Yeah? Yeah. And what brought you out here in the first place? Dad retired up here uh, 30 years ago and bought a bought an old Queenslander and did it up. We started coming out every up every weekend and, yeah, just loving the outdoors and the farm life. All the space is, just adds to a lot more freedom. So, um, yeah, that's what it's all about. So, we, um, yeah, we liked it so much. Eventually, when you grow up and leave school and stuff and, um, yeah, it worked out that I probably want to end up here too. So a block of dirt come up beside dad for sale and he go he luckily that's probably the only time in my life I've listened to my dad. But he slapped <laughs> and it was a good thing I did because, yeah, about, about 10, years, 10, 15, 10 years ago, yeah, I think. My, oh, I have to sort those figures out, but anyway. But, it could even be 15 or 20, but um, that's when, yeah, I bought the block of dirt up here beside Dad. And, yeah, been up here ever since. Awesome. Yeah. So how old are you now? I am. I feel about, my body feels about 50. Yep. My actual age is 47. My mentality is probably about, I think I'm about 30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even younger. Yeah. Fuck, man. I, don't, I wonder where my mentality is sometimes. I just Not like... Not too mature. Yeah, no. Nah, young at heart. Just... I just like... Yeah, outdoors, be free. And just keep living. And that's what I reckon I'm doing up here. I couldn't do it in the city. Yep. Um, yeah, I had five acres in Brisbane. But, um, no, nah, that's... That's no, that's not country, but even Kenilworth's shrinking. Um, yeah, Kenilworth's got a lot busier in the last, uh, definitely in the last two years. Yep. And uh, why do you think that is? Corona. Corona. <laughs> yeah. Right up. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Anything that's for sale sold. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And weekends are just hectic up here, but it it's all nice, out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's nice to be a part of the buzz on weekends and then get out of it. During the week. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, that's how I roll. So freedom's a big thing for you, eh? Yeah, space, freedom, uh, no boundaries. Um, yeah, because, yeah, boundaries aren't fun. They're boring. No, they they're, are, eh, they're, they're, They've put there to be broken. So yeah, exactly. As you know, that that, that sort of didn't, doesn't really work in the city, so that's why I'm up here. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. I've got a bit more space to play. Um, yeah. And so where, before coming out here, where were you? Uh, south side of Brisbane. South side of Brisbane. Uh, Mount Cravat, Capella Bar, yeah, okay. Mount Cotton. Yeah, 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 gotcha. Yeah. Good place. Again, yep. that's all gone through the roof and um, got all cut up. But um, no, that was a good place to grow up. It was far enough out to have a bit of space, but close enough to the city to still go to school and stuff. Yeah, nice. So where did you go to school? 
Dylan, I have a college Dylan. Cooper. Really. Okay, cool, bro. <laughs> yeah. I um, I was, I have just been living in Woolongabba there. You yeah. See, and you see, I skateboarding yeah. at yeah. Cooper yeah. Skate Park there. Yeah. A fair bit. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was good, man. It was really good. How funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. That was that was the schooling era. And do you have uh, any brothers or sisters? Yeah, one brother. Um, if you can probably see, this will be funny if you can see me on video. You can. Um, yeah. So <laughs> two. Two Shout year, out to your brother. Hey, brother. Two years younger, two foot taller. There you go. <laughs> get, you, get your head around that. <laughs> yeah, I'm fortunate that I'm taller than my little brother. Anyway, it's probably not stronger than him though. Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 We had a wrestle the other day. He flogged me. Yeah, I don't know how I'd go flogging my younger brother these days. He's Might have bit, to use a stick. He's a bit heavier than me. <laughs> so what do you do for work out here? Um, I have been, I'll start in the beginning, um, at, straight out of school. I uh, was just la- labouring at a pottery place where they made pottery. Um, so yeah, what's that movie? What's that movie? Um, Patrick Swayze. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, ghost. I'm not a movie buff, ghost. mate. No, I haven't even yeah. seen so it. So now I can't throw. I'm not no Patrick Swayze. I can't throw, make stuff out of clay. I did slip casts, so pouring liquid clay into molds. That was first job. Um, yeah, it lasted a while. Um, had enough of that. Then um, bouncing around Brisbane, out of school. Then I got. Auto electrician apprenticeship, that was awesome, but I was young and dumb and silly and uh, when the boss put his foot down, I just said, yeah, had enough of this and walked. That was a dumb move. Yeah? That was a real dumb so move. So why was that a dumb move? Because it's really hard to get your foot back in the door when you walked out. Yeah. <laughs> that it's a pretty was good dumb. apprenticeship to have, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, still got all those it? skills. No, I did. I think I did the first two years. <laughs> yeah, dumb, 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 dumb move. Don't ever walk out of trade. There you go. Yeah, life lesson. Especially here in Australia. Hey. Correct. So, still use all those skills. Still got all my tools. Still love tinkering around with cars and mechanics and stuff. Uh, anyway, so that yeah lasted two years and um, got out of there because for some stupid reason not had enough. Um, probably because the boss and I weren't seeing eye to eye. Uh, Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I probably yeah. should have. Yeah, not, not really. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's gone. But now, yeah. Then bobbing around for a few years doing this and that. Uh, but now the big one I've got into now is I moved up to Kenilworth, got a job at a horse stud up here. Um, 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 um. Brooklyn stud. There you go. I'm not nervous, am I? I'm forgetting a lot. How That's funny. all right. So what's what's Brooklyn Stud? Brooklyn Stud. Um, yeah. Um, big endurance stables. Okay. Um, yeah. Worked with them for two years. Awesome experience. Yep. Learned lots about life. Uh, so what, what does that entail? Uh, oh, doing that up maintenance, there. fencing, farmhand. Yep. Um, Working with horses. Doing a little bit with horses. Yep. Um, I was mainly, yeah, taking care of the property. All just farm handy stuff. Awesome. Um, yeah, I've never really done too much work out on a property, but I always kind of like envy that experience, people going out there and doing that time on properties. Yeah. So I'd, I'd really like to do that at one point in my life, though time's kind of... It's not big time like, um, I don't know if you've seen that movie, Yellowstone. It's not big time like massive cattle property out yep. there. It's only, yeah, well, well, I guess 500 acres or 300 acres yep. in Kenilworth. That's tiny compared to the big stuff. But, yeah, oh, that was an experience um, and a good one. And anyway, f- f- ended the story there, then went to, yeah, got my first, sold a bit of firewood, started selling firewood for a... How's that go? Awesome, love it. Yeah? Yeah, you don't have to talk to people. You've always got, you supply, do the right thing. You've always got happy customers. Phone rings, offers head in winter. Cannot keep up. And where are you getting the firewood from? Oh, anywhere. Old fences. Yep. Dead, and are you tr- dead then, trees. Are you then chopping it up yourself? Yeah, and, definitely. Yep, cool. All of that. Yeah. Bit of work. But, yeah, um, sounds like it. I've got no dramas with the money. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's cool. Then, um, yeah, that's how I first started at Kenilworth Homestead. I was selling them. My mate was working there and he, he, was, he said, we need some wood. So I was selling them wood for a while. Then... Um, Winter finished and summer started, and the owner of the homestead said, "Um, yeah, 
do you want to, can you drive a tractor? And I went, hell yeah, that's, <laughs> that's got aircon. <laughs> so sat in, a, sat in my fat bum on a tractor for a couple of days. Not and a bad gig. It was two days the first week and then I've been five days a week ever since then. I think I've nearly been there. I won't say 10 because that's an exaggeration, but I've definitely been there nine. Yep. Yeah, done nine years straight there. So I must be doing something right because nice. he hasn't got rid of me yet. Yeah. And you're happy there? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Good. Yeah, quality of life. Good quality of life. There's no get rich quick out at Kenilworth. But, um, that's all right. That's a lovely spot, isn't it? Yeah, quality of life. Um, I'm only, when I was in Brisbane, I used to drive, I worked in construction. I forgot that bit. Yep. Um, and I used to drive anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half to work every day. It's a mission, isn't it? It's Nightmare. Such a waste of time so that makes an eight hour day, a 10 hour day. Yeah. Nightmare. It's all right when you're not driving and you can sleep in the car. Yeah. That's what so I used to do. <laughs> in Kenilworth, I'd live eight <laughs> minutes from home, eight minutes to work, eight minutes home. Dude, that's, only drum with that is you get called in if there's shit going down at work busted pipe oh bang Dan's only eight minutes away yeah yeah on my day off yeah get called in yeah gotta love that yeah anyway <laughs> yep having a dig um so yeah what else yeah been at Kenilworth Homestead for yeah nine years um and, and are your cool. parents still living out here so yeah mum and dad so I split up when I was 12 yep but that up, I, have, I reckon that happens a lot lately. Yeah, one hundred percent. I went to a private boys' college in Brisbane. Yep, and that was back in the eighties. And my dad was blown away when he was talking to the headmaster because um, sixty percent of the school were from had broken broken families. As you in, kidding? No, back in the eighties. Back even? in the eighties, sixty okay. percent of them. 60% of them from, were from a single parent family or re, um, remarried. Yeah. So, boom, boom. Pretty Guess crazy, what? isn't it? It's, it's, um, yeah, that's life. It, dude, it happens. Chin up, shoulders back, get on with it. Um, Mum's well still said, alive. Well mate. Mum's still alive. Love her. See her. See her once a month or whatever, whenever she comes up or whenever I go down. She lives in Brisbane. Um, Dad lives next door. Um, that can be interesting sometimes. <laughs> Um, whenever he wants something, I'm, I'm there You're too. On call again. On call, bang. Eight o'clock at night, fix some busted pipes after you've done eight hours at work. So they're the negatives of living so close. Eh? Oh, you got to love it. It's, it's handy for him. But, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> nah, it's all good. Such is family, hey? Yeah. And what about your older brother? Your younger brother, sorry. Your the taller bigger, brother. T- taller brother. <laughs> the taller brother is living in Budrum. He yep. installs, he's got big time solar. Solar power installation company, um, yeah, imports um, inverters, batteries, and panels, and installs the whole lot himself. Um, going real well. Does uh, yeah, all the off grid stuff. He's everywhere, always, everywhere. He's just busy as wicked. Yeah, um, he's the breeder of the family. Dad always said I was gonna um, have heaps of kids, but I said, ah, don't, you obviously don't know me, mate. <laughs> <'Cause>, um, <laughs> If you haven't worked that out yet, I am the kid and I'm not growing up. There you so, go, dude. There's no, I love kids. Don't get me wrong. And I am awesome with kids. But guess what? When I've had enough, I hand them back. <laughs> Giddy up. Just take the good good from them, eh? Oh, yeah. I only take the good, the happy, the smiles. I don't mind changing the poo nappy, but I'll do one a year. None of this 10 a day stuff. Yeah, just for a bit of entertainment. Nice. So you're an uncle then also? Oh, yeah. Love uncle. it. Uncle. Yep. But how, uh, how many kids does your brother have? Three. Three. Cool. We have a Gabe, we have a Judah, and we have a Silas. So what? a oh, Gabe? Gabe. Yep, that's the name? Yep. Cool. Gabe's the eldest boy. Judah is the tank in the middle, and Silas is the wise one. He's Silas in, sounds like a wise name. Uh, they're all units in their own right. Yep. They're cool. Don't see him enough. Too busy with working. But um, one thing I enjoy is being able to pay bills on time. So and the only way to do that is make sure you've got cash in the bank. So boom, boom. Yeah, it's an important thing to have, isn't it? Yeah. Work is definitely important. you got to, uh, yeah, you got to make sure you don't, money is freedom, but you got to make sure you don't get trapped making the money. Um, Yeah, my girlfriend definitely says I'm trapped because <laughs> she says I'm all work and no play. But, um, yeah, such is life. Does she work? She does work. Yep. She's a carer. Yep. Nice. The disabled kids, yeah. She works. She loves the kids. She loves her animals. 
Um, yeah, she's got one daughter of her own. Yeah. Sounds like you're living a pretty good life out here, mate. I like it. Yeah, it's kind of always cool. Yeah. It's just, you just don't go into town on the weekends. On the weekend, man. You can't get a drive, park. Yeah, driving through out to that terra firma barbecue on the weekend. It was packed, hey. Yeah. And apparently the bakery's pretty good here or the donut shop or something. Yeah, pretty good if you want to put on kilos and yeah. get blocked up. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> Dude, eating a massive cup of flour, water and sugar and food coloring. I'm happy for you, but it never kills, tried yeah. one. Never touched one. Haven't you? No. Fuck yeah. Apparently they're doing the old um, one kilo sausage rolls. Now, hey. Yeah, you might have hooked me. I'll go one of them and it'll probably last a week. But, Decent um, sausage roll, man. One kilo. Yeah. <laughs> Epic. Yeah, that's the new thing that's going to come out. From that same donut place, is yeah. it? Yeah. I guess it's just another tourist attraction, isn't it? Of course. It? Oh, yeah. Well, if all the campgrounds didn't put Kenworth on the map, the the um, donut shop did, or bakery. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, lo- I don't know if, yeah, a lot of the locals just miss our... Miss the old-fashioned bakery where they get bread, fresh bread every day. But um, I don't think that happens up there, which is nah, sad. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, the good bakeries, hey? You gotta get that fresh bread in the morning. Correct. When it's still warm. Yeah. Uh, put some butter on that. Do you ever make fresh bread at home? No, nah, I'll just try to stay away from wheat. Yeah, okay. I, 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 have, a, I, have, a, I have a food problem, a seafood problem. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I, as I... I haven't got hollow legs. Um, I'm four foot nothing, and whatever I eat goes straight to my gut. Yeah. So I have dinner, and it looks like I put on three kilos, and but that every time I eat, it doesn't leave. So yeah, I got to watch me weight. So the donut shops, taboo, banned out, zero zilch, nada. I have so enough trouble come- eating small meals, let alone because yeah, I usually probably eat two, but um, my. I have my body operates. I feel, um, my, my, I am a machine. If my fuel tank is empty, I cannot work. So I just keep filling the tank and keep working. <laughs> Love it. So if you're coming to Kenilworth, don't go to the fucking bakery. Stay, <laughs> stay, stay away. If you want to put on weight and look like a big Greek Adonis, I'm happy for you. Or Buddha. i got the Buddha thing going on. Buddhas are good. Yeah. <laughs> Buddha's awesome, but he's, I don't know how his abs are going. Yeah, neither. Yeah. I'm like, but I've got a keg, another six pack. Yeah, we're going on, going real well. <laughs> does it give you good luck if you rub it? No, it doesn't go away either. It only gets, <laughs> it only gets bigger. <laughs> yeah, cool, man. Need um, need some microphone stands for these things, eh? Yeah, I'm actually, not in the hunt. I was gonna jam it in there, but I didn't know how. I actually fucking have some, dude, but I don't, I don't think I brought them. You've got my. There you go. It's working. Mine jammed in. Just don't let it fall off. That's working. Yay. My handle's getting sore hanging on to that. One too, man. Oh. So one part of my, speaking of microphones, one part of my life that was a bit um, entertaining was, um, yeah, between jobs, as you do. That, there's a big gap between jobs usually. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, a entertainer grabbed me, and I thought he wanted me to entertain. So... We were out the front of a strip club um, down at Underwood. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, it was called Rogues International. And it was a strip club. Rogues International Strip Club. Yeah. How long ago was this? Oh, that had to be 20 years ago. Yep. Eon. Yeah, so Rogues International Nightclub. Um, the owner of that business walked outside the nightclub at 2 o'clock in the morning and asked me if I want a job, and I nearly hit him because I thought he wanted me to strip. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Sicko. He goes, no, 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 you silly little fella. He said, he, and I didn't realise, I won the joke competition. I got up and told the joke in the joke competition and you could have heard a pin drop. There would have been uh, 300 people in the club and it was, I picked up the microphone and everyone just, you could have heard a pin drop. Everyone's like, what the fuck has this little dude got to say? So next minute he realised I could have a lot of potential and... I, I did have it for a little while, and that was cool. So, yeah, next minute I have a job introducing – I used to dress up in a white silk foam nappy and yeah. introduce girls and guys and tell them to get the gear off and, yeah. <laughs> anyway. That sounds pretty interesting, dude. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Um, Did you have to tell jokes and things like that, or no? Oh no, I just gave people shit. Yeah. I, we didn't need a bouncer because I was—I'm six foot now, as you might have worked out. With a microphone, I'm, I'm ten foot and bulletproof. So <laughs> yeah, it was easy as just just give people shit, make people laugh, and like. Public speaking at first can be pretty daunting, man. Were you nervous at all when you no. first started doing it? Give me a microphone, nerves are gone. Yeah, okay. In a nightclub. Nice, oh, dude. Easy as. Yeah, just, yeah, nervous, but you just start rolling with shit. Yeah. You see some idiot wearing a pink hat and calling him a faggot. Just yep, yep. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. Um, just whatever. Anything. And he's probably not a faggot, but he loves you calling him a faggot. <laughs> And you wait, and you go up to the biggest guy in the nightclub and pinch him on the bum just so he wants to knock you out, whatever. Yeah. Anything rolls. And anyway, yeah. And how long did you do that for? Oh, a couple of years. Cool, man. And again, but just like on the weekends or started off being Saturday night only. Yep. Then it was and it ended up being Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And then it was sleep. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah, those those days didn't last too long and yeah. not real healthy for you. Nah, it would have been an interesting lifestyle, hey? Yeah, not into Especially that. Especially around that crowd too, I imagine. Up all night. Yeah, up all night, sleep all day. Nah. As you see, I've changed now. I'm um, sleep all night, up all day and got the suntan thing going on. Yep. So, and that's not from sun bacon, that's from doing everything totally outdoors. There is nothing of no part of my life indoors apart from sleep. So that's why you don't like the rain. Yeah. Rain just gets in the way, slows me down. Don't mind. Love summer and winter. Love the change because winter's firewood and summer's busy. But, um, um, yeah, not the rain just puts a handbrake on everything. And it's probably good for me because apparently I don't stop. Yeah. Now and then you got to stop. Yeah, sure. It's been raining a shit ton lately too, hasn't it? Yeah, and hopefully that La Nina's here, that wet season. Yeah. Because it's been, we've had a lot of dry. Yeah, it'll be good, hey? We've had a lot of dry. But yeah, bring on a cyclone, I say. Let's have a, have a rest. Giddy up. Um, yeah, a few floods. Um, yeah, week off work, that'll be lovely. <laughs> it's all part of it, isn't it? Giddy up, that's the story. What else? Um, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that. So night... how did that? How did that nightclub nightclub job come to an end? Oh, I just wasn't getting anywhere. It was only just a bit of a laugh. Fifty bucks first, a show, yeah. bit of a laugh, yeah. bit of bit of cash flow, but that was. See some sexy girls with their clothes off. Yeah. Oh, that was more the thing. That was yeah. I've got a job. This is my job. Cool. <laughs> this works. I, this I'll works. Get used I'm to gonna it. hang with you, like <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. You got your handful of cool ones and your handful of um, ones that weren't so cool. Yep. Oh, 100% I'd say. But um, there's definitely some cool people in that world, but there's some definitely some, oh, some losers. Yeah. Same applies to every world though. Like, yeah, it's everyone's, yeah, same applies to every job. Everyone's different, hey? Correct. Um, yeah, in every job you get people you stay away from and people you get attracted to. Um, it's just better if you hang around the good people because yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah, your life tends to go in the right direction. That's what uh, we're about here at Stay Weird Podcast, finding the good people, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's one, one thing's for sure. I'm not into gaming at all. Yeah. I've got a couple of mates that made some stupid money out of it, and I'm happy for them. Doing what? Gaming. <laughs> Sl- sleep all night. No. Game all night, sleep all day. They're both albino. Yeah, okay. I won't drop their names, but no, they're, no. they're twins. They know yeah. who I'm talking about. <laughs> and they're making giga dollars. Yeah. And Just playing games? Yeah. What game? Oh, they're sponsored by, I don't know, they're sponsored by the biggest gaming company in the yeah, world. Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. Man. They're doing real well. I'm yeah. happy for them, and it's worked well for them, but gaming stuff's a lot of people too. Oh, fuck, dude. I can't, I spend like... You know, ten minutes looking at my phone screen, I feel fucked. You yeah, know, it's I just oh, some people live for it though. Yeah, game all night, sleep all day. It's like okay, well they've been up all night, so they can't hold down a job the next day. Yeah, they're not going to be motivated to get a job. Like yeah, no. So I'm not in the screen time at all. No. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love Facebook. That shit's hilarious. Um, and that's that's my news. I probably shouldn't listen to it like my news, and I've stopped listening to it as my news because there's a lot of BS on it. But it's a good way to catch up. Everyone finds you on Facebook. Old yep. schoolmates, 
It's like next minute you'll have a friend request from someone you went to school with. Like, I left school in 92. And that's 2000 and, what is it now? 2021. 21. There you go. That's the year after I was born. Wow. That's like 29 years ago. How funny. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, and towards the end of that, did the nightclub thing for two years, towards the end of that, um, yeah, over it. Um, yeah, it wasn't going anywhere. Um, well, it wasn't healthy, and I went, nah, time for a change. Go to Bush. So, yeah. Bush is good, man, you know. Yeah, go to Bush. I do love it out here too, but I also love the city. I like the city mainly because of like the huge variety that's in it in terms of people and interactions. Oh, there's a you lot know, of I really like that. There's a lot of weirdos out yeah. here. Out of Kenilworth, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah, dude. I might have to walk around here with my GoPro. Definitely. You do the main street of Kenilworth on a weekend. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's getting worse. There's whole different types. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of city people, but yeah, you don't see many locals on weekends. They, they're all hiding. Yeah. Recluse mode. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, your friends are some of the lucky ones then to be in that position of making the money while they game. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, they're plugged in, set for life, fully. That's set awesome, for life. dude. Congrats yes. to them. Yeah. My little definitely. brother wishes he could do that, but he just games or not, it doesn't make a dollar. <laughs> no. Yeah. These dudes are definitely making it. Yeah, when I was back at uni, I used to be addicted to this one game, man. I was so addicted to it kind of almost ruined my uni career did ruin my uni career that and a bit of partying what were you yeah. doing at uni surveying ah yeah 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 so, so but you got your ticket to survey now yeah yeah so I, gradu- I graduated uni and everything oh, did yeah. that so why do you say gaming wrecked your uni career because when i was studying oh so it took me six years to finish instead of four ah you know yeah yeah so there was a couple of years there where not too much got done which is okay yeah. Yeah. Got some life experience there. Yeah. Yeah. Dota. Dota is the game. Shout out to Dota. Defense of the Ancients. Fucking good game, man. It's a good game. That's what my little bro's addicted to. I was yeah. addicted to. So I understand. <laughs> yeah. Wow. People are making millions of dollars on that too. Like well, I th- well, the people who made the game or people who are playing it? Oh, both. And people who are playing it. So they have... So do you go so they have tournaments all year round, you know, and the yeah. largest tournament is called the International. Yeah. The International Tournament. And I think the prize pool this year was like forty million dollars, you know. Yeah. Yep, yep. Gnarly money, eh? Hey? Yeah. And that they have it set up in like a stadium now and they've got like so the game is you choose your hero, your yeah. characters. Teams are five, so it it's seems five, like five this heroes. thing they're playing. Possibly is, mate. Um five heroes, each team gets a hero each so it's five versus five and in this international tournament yeah so it's in the middle of a center stadium like a big you know grandstand yeah and they've got like holographics and everything where the heroes are coming out it's like pretty gnarly setup yeah yeah that's wild yeah i'd like to go watch it one day to be honest yeah live yeah like in person i'd sit in the stadium and watch them play the computer games (laughs) yeah wow it's getting crazy isn't it that's what's happening it's insane man yeah that's the story yeah look at that rain we day off and it's raining great we're lucky we're doing this yeah exactly yeah thanks a lot for this too man no drums yeah a bit of entertainment it is eh it's fun having a chat hopefully it all works out never done one before but first podcast ever (laughs) <laughs> Mine too. First of many. Yeah. This shit's gonna be huge. Stay fucking weird. I love it, man. I think we love it. Life's dope, eh? Life is epic. But it's not epic laying in bed. Nah, it sucks, man. It's gotta easy to do, but hey. Get off your ass. Nah, yeah. I got some. Yeah, got some friends that just. Yeah, just lazy in bed too much. It's, she's just wasting her fucking life. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, it's sad to see, isn't it? 18 year old kid is yeah, okay. turning to shit. So she's 18, is she? Yeah. yeah. Won't say who, but yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Too close to home. But um, yeah, just wasting her life. Won't even get motivated to get on the doll. 
won't even get motivated to get a license. Yeah, dude, okay. I don't see. I was dude, seven, like eighteen. I had my license in my hand. Yeah. The day I turned fucking eighteen, boom, it was there. It's like fuck yeah, that's freedom. I can get in that thing and drive over there, and no one knows where I am. <laughs> that's my world. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? Oh yeah, dude. I don't understand these fuckers that don't have their license. Fuck! If I have a license, it's if I don't have my license, it's fuck end of the world. Yeah, you're stuck, aren't you? I definitely out here. I don't do pub. I mean, I don't live in the city, so I don't do public transport. Yeah. But yeah. Oh wow. Well. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a kind of almost a uh, general pattern that's occurring in the younger kids these days too. You know, just a lot more laziness about. You know. No drive. Yeah, exactly. No drive. Yeah, Life's I'd rather be easy, a bit go go hey? and burn out than not even have a crack. Because you can hey? then you can have a week, yeah. sleep for a week, and you'll come good. Yeah. But all these kids that aren't that are just wasting their life in bed, what? It's, and I honestly believe it's their parents. Yeah. It's what they see. Like, no one's perfect, but I, I guarantee you, I'm on on track a, a fuck ton more than any anyone that's fucking lying in bed. Yeah, yeah, that's it, hey. <laughs> boom, boom. Gotta be yeah. active, man. Dude, I'm pay, paying my bills. I'm paying my mortgage off. I fucking, if I want something, guess what? I fucking buy it because yeah. I've got the money to. Because yeah. I fucking worked to get the money to. Fucking yeah. simple, hey. You gotta work for what you want. Yeah, there's a. Yeah. Oh, I think my dad told me this. Fucking a, a good um, what's the word? A good, good code to go by or something is um Goya. That's a business business ethic. And so, someone said, "What's Goya? It's called get off your ass." Yeah, dude, <laughs> I like it. G O Y A. Yeah. Goya. Goya. That's my business fucking plan. All you gotta do is fucking make it happen. If you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. For example, if you want to, some, yeah, my mate hasn't got a driver's license, hasn't even got a separation certificate, but she's got a fucking iPhone 12. Yeah. You're paying, you've, one, you went out and bought it. Two, you're paying $120 a month to have the fucking thing, but you can't get a separation certificate because you're too fucking lazy. Yeah. Uh, you, ha- you haven't got your driver's license because you're too fucking lazy. I don't care you haven't got a car. If you had a car, I'd probably, if you had your license, I'd probably give you a car. Like, yeah. fuck. But you can get that uh, iPhone pretty easily, yeah. Hey? Yeah, but I need <laughs> yeah. an iPhone to game so I can yeah. talk to my fat mates. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you just push the talk button. <laughs> <laughs> you just saw Andy Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair enough, though. Like you got to hold those kind of opinions when it comes to that. Uh, that opinion? Stuff. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. Yeah. Lazy exactly. fuck. Yeah. Rah. Are we allowed to swear on this thing? Fucking oath. Fucking oath. Yeah. Guess what? You just met the real day, and I say fuck a lot. Fuck yeah. Um, Love yeah, this round. I am not into cunts who sit on the fucking doll. Boom, boom. I'm paying your wage, fucker. Yeah, that's right. You're, eh? you're on permanent holiday, and I only get four weeks a year? You know what you can do? You can kiss my white ass. <laughs> 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 I hope that's what you want, because that's what you got. Yeah, that's good. You can show your ass to the camera if you want. Maybe later. We can both give, give me a double vodka. <laughs> Everyone reckons I've got duck disease. My ass drags along the ground. <laughs> Correct, because I've got no legs. <laughs> so what do you think of that shrine over there? Is that what the it- fucking... Please help me understand. I am looking at a thing that looks like a bucket full of fucking popcorn or a bucket... At the movies, a bucket, full, a big one of those jumbo buckets full of straws or something fucked up, or a, a KFC bucket that's been all, all of all the meat's been eaten and all it's just full of bones, and it's apparently it's a designer dunny. So, the government has got fuckloads of government council, who the fuck ever, they're all the same bunch of knobs. Yeah. Um, as you can see, I'm really politically correct. Um, <laughs> they've got enough money to spend what? How many mil? Like there's a sign oh, I don't there's a plaque. Know. Like we're talking. Well, they cost over a million dollars. There's a plaque there. So. Go read the plaque. Yeah, there you go. We'll get some information for you. There was millions of dollars gone into that, or at least one. I'm sure. Oh, uh, no, th- I don't know. Thousands? I don't know. What was it? It cost gigatons of fucking dollars to make the ugliest fucking eyesore dunny thing you've ever seen in your life. 
Well, should tighten the camera around and have a look at that. Yeah, but design a duddy. Why? You can shit in a hole in the bush, cover it up, cost nothing, fertilize the ground. You, everyone can't do that. though, It's just me. But um, a normal dunny, normal dunny block can cost something. But what's the go with? Is that thing still on? It better be. Um, so that, what, what, what does that thing say? So it's called the Kenilworth Designer Dunny, and it was voted. Like it was approved by a panel of Kenilworth judges. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that means, yeah. I think you're correct when you say there are a few weirdos out here in Kenilworth. There you go. <laughs> it's approved. But what, who in their right mind would approve something that looks like that? It's the, the it's not even colour coded with the fucking country. It's, it's just fucked up. It's just like, it's an eyesore. The only good thing is it's yeah, got a ramp. It. It's got a ramp and no steps because. Oh. Video we'll get a video of that later. Yeah, it's. I, mean, I actually have never used it. Probably because the ramp's too long. I probably would have. If I needed crap, I need a crap now. And by the time I walk all the <laughs> way up that ramp, my the shit would, would have hit my jocks. So there's probably no point. It's not. It doesn't look too inviting to walk into. Anyway, and at night time, it? it's lit up like a Christmas tree. You can see the dunnies in the road. That's just like I don't want. I don't don't know if I want anyone watching me have a crap. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah, That's it's definitely dunny. got a spotlight on it. Yeah. Um, so what else? Marichi door. What what happens in Marichi door? Um, a surf there. Some nice. days. Nice. Yeah. Nice. No, no surf today, no bikinis today, no sunbaking no. today, no chicks today. There might be some surf though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who goes surfing in the wet? You'd freeze your dinger off. You get wet anyways. Yeah, but at least it's not <laughs> the sun's out and you're warm. Yeah, it is better like that. No, actually when the rain's what surfing in the rain's good, man. It's like Kind of, Does it get glassed out? Yeah, yeah. glasses out. It looks like a blanket, man. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I really enjoy it. But yeah, mum and dad have a place there, so I'm kind of taking advantage of that and staying there while just figuring out what to fucking do with my life, really. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's handy to fall back on them. Oh, it is. It yeah. is. I think you've got to take advantage of situations like that if you have them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just hang around till Christmas comes, man, and go hang out with the family. And spend time with them. And my, yeah. My little bro, my little sister, my older bro. Yeah. What's our older bro do? He's down in Melbourne, or oh, Atruca, outside of Melbourne, little town. And he works. What does he work for? Dude. He kind of works for this company like Salary Moderations oh, yeah. and that, like that. Yeah. Yep. My little bro, he works as a surveyor's assistant in Emerald for dad. Oh, cool. Yep. So dad's a surveyor also. Yeah. And my mum's a lawyer. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And my little sister lives in Brisbane. She works for this commercial real estate company. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's the family, man. Mum's a lawyer. Yeah. And right now, kind of, my only really goal is just to spend good time with my family while I'm still in Australia before yeah. taking off overseas again. Yeah. Have you been overseas doing your surveying work? No, never doing oh. it. I was, I was an English teacher over there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I went over and lived in Latin America for a bit, and I was an English teacher over there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty oh, cool, that, man. Is that the hat on backwards thing? Is no. That, no? Is that why you, uh, I thought that was part of the American thing? <laughs> <laughs> Might be, dude. Latin America I was. What's that? Like um, South America down in, like where they speak Spanish, and oh, wow. like Argentina. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's where I was most of the time. Yeah. We got a, I think it's Argentinian. That was that barbecue terra firma. Yeah. 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 Ah. You might want to edit that bit out. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. We can do that, man. Yeah. What else is happening? Um, what were we talking about? Um, Cows backwards from America. Yeah. <laughs> so America, Latin America, America, oh, Argentina. Yeah. That's where that food thing was in there. I yep. oh, did you enjoy your meal? Terra yeah, meal? fuck, bro. It was tasty, man. Good food. Really tasty. Good food, big feed. Shout out to Terra Firma. Terra Firma. Yeah. Um, BBQs in Kenilworth. You'll run into Dane there. How do I pronounce your name? Dane? Dane. Yeah. Dane. D-A-E-N. Dane. Dane. Yeah, so Charlie from Terra Firma does a big cook-up most weekends at the Homestead. Jump online, book your tickets, but yeah. Um, I'll put that in the show notes. <laughs> Since this is a professional podcast. 
podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm professional. First podcast. Fucking I've got my yell plates on, but I, th- I think it's working. Fucking I. Right? Yeah, you're driving. Yeah, I'm driving. We're managing. <laughs> We're getting through it. Yeah. Not too hard, just talking shit. That's it. Chewing the fat. Chewing the fat. That's, that's me. I love a bit of lamb. Oh, who doesn't? That lamb from Terra Firma was tasty as, man. Everything from Terra yeah. Firma is fucking amazing. Yeah. Do they, is it the same meal every week or different? Uh, no. The same menu. I think they change it every now and then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's always just five different t- kinds of meat. Pork, lamb, beef, chicken. They might chuck in a bit of fish, I know. Um, yeah, smoke the fuck out of it from like 4 8. Fires, lights at 4. 4 a.m. in the morning. Right. Yeah, coal start, 4.35, chuck the meat on. It gets absolutely smoked the fuck out of till 11. Plate, food's on the plate by 11.30, 12, you're eating. And then we punch out anywhere between 100 and to 5. Father's Day, there's 500 blokes turned up there for lunch. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that was, that was a big day. Yeah, it's delicious, eh? So delicious, man. That frog will be coming up on the mics. Definitely. You're a noisy... Hey! Yeah, anyway, that's Mr. Froggy. Um, yeah, so what else is the go? Um, something else I enjoy doing. Got a cattle dog. What's um, his name? Tilly's the mum. Um, I, I change the dad every now and then because I sell, sell puppies. Yep. And, um, yeah, that's an um, interesting little hobby. Um, How much do you sell each puppy for around about? Oh, some people sell them, say I'm giving them away. Some people sell it's way too dear. I don't know what's going on, but um, oh, yeah, when I was a kid and my dog accidentally fell pregnant, I was flicking the puppies for 50 bucks each. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, everyone said I was a loser then. But now it's, um, I got I got the mums insane. I've got dad with really good bloodlines, but I'm not into the registered papers or any of the garbage. I'm just... I just Here's a dog. choose the do- choose the parents, so I get the pups that I want. As in, yeah. really tall, stu- 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 tail, stumpy tail or long tail doesn't matter. They want purebred blue, no red in it. Yeah. Um, and we have working dog, really tall dog, not a short fat Smithfield. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're called Australian cattle dogs, blue, blue healer. Um, it's all just about different bloodlines. You get different shapes, but um. So, yeah, and anyway, I was getting a thousand bucks a puppy. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, no shit, especially when she has 10 puppies. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was my last little exercise. <laughs> laughing. And it's, you're always petrified that you're not going to sell them all, but yeah. But I didn't realize. It. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's slow. Like the last one dragged out to, usually I like selling them at eight weeks because that's when they start bonding and they, really want to look for a master or an owner and they connect with whoever's feeding them yeah. or whoever gives them the most attention. And they always bond with someone, whether it be you or your missus or someone, they always fucking connect with one person or the whole family, but yeah. they, they connect with that your, their world. Anyway, so I had this, all the others sold basically straight away, eight weeks. Yeah. And that was perfect. Uh, I had one left and he didn't sell to his 12 weeks old. And of course, he was fully bonded with me. Of course, he's a cracking dog. Oh, don't ask me why. I was totally happy and prepared to keep the runt, which was a perfect dog, just a little bit small. I wanted to keep the runt. She was a feisty little bitch. And, oh, real smart, just fucking epic dog. And looked a bit crazy. But no, some other fucker saw what I saw uh, in her and wanted her. And so I get home from work one day and the missus goes, um, you know the one you liked? She goes, it's gone. I went, she goes, but he paid full price. I went, Oh, well, I suppose I've got nothing to whinge about. <laughs> Full price for the runt. So, like, whatever. So, yeah. Anyway, then we had this last one. What do we call him? Uh, Rocky. Because, you know, Rocky, Bubba, in the fights, just keep getting up, never get yeah. knocked down. So, that's what this dog, he wasn't fighting to kill. He was just play fighting. Because he was the last pup and hot and just wanted something to do, always looking for to play. He's with two older dogs, so I've got the mother, which had enough of all the pups, and he, when she had enough, she'd just smash him or just put her foot on him and just hold him down. 
As soon as she got her foot off, he'd get back up and strap again. And this had happened all day. And the mum would just bowl the pup over. Didn't matter. He'd tumble and get thrown. And anyway, so we called him Rocky. And um, next minute, yeah, 12 weeks old, I got this dodgy phone call. It was, it was only dodgy because I didn't want to sell him. Um, he goes, hey, mate, you got any dogs left? Someone said you got one left. I went, yeah, he's getting a bit old, though. And I was probably thinking of keeping him. I go, and he goes, um, do you want to... He goes, oh, no, real keen, mate, real keen. I said, well, you've got to pass a... You've got to tick a few boxes before you get my dog, before you own one of my pups. He goes, what's that? I said, well, first thing, do you own acreage? He goes, yes, I've got 10 acres at Belli. I went, oh. I went, you ticked that box, well done. So because they're working dogs, I flatly refuse to sell them to anyone who lives in suburbia. Yeah, fair enough. The end. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. You can give me five grand for one dog, it's not going to suburbia. Ever. Yeah. Ha ha. Don't care. I like it. And so, yeah, working dogs. Have to go to a working farm. Have to see cattle or chooks or pigs or have to be on a farm. Minimum of two acres. Or I did make one exception to the rule. Really young family, really busy family, really all working gymnasiums, PT trainers. Go for like a 5K run every day, morning yeah. and night. Live at the beach, on the beach. I'm like, yeah, that's a good life for a dog. Yeah, for sure. So... Yeah, that's where the sexy little runt left went. But um, anyway, yeah, he was keen as. So, yeah, I told him to sold apart from this last one. But, yeah, this fella rung up and he was keen and he, he worked out quick, smart. As soon as he got there, he couldn't, the dog didn't even want to let him pat him. The dog he goes, he's definitely bonded with you. Oh, no, it was scary. And he growled at him when he went to pat him. It was just, oh, it was hard. That sucks. It's so hard. And... He just goes, still keen. And he goes, Mrs. and kid had a young Mrs. and I oh know, Mrs. and a really young kid. Anyway, yeah, they, they took him. And thank God, the day later, he rang me up. He said, Dog still hates me, but it, but loves my Mrs. and kid. And that just made me happy. I am cool as he's bonded with someone. So that, anyway, they um, did that. So love, stayed at home for a few days with mum and the kid, chilled out, everything's good. Then went to work with this bloke and um, got some quality time with him and he's he's coming good. But um yeah, that was really hard. Just giving like selling away a dog, dog that had fully yeah. bonded with you. Dude, this dog wanted nothing but your company and your food. Nothing <laughs> else. Nothing else but your time. Never spoke back. Better than any wife. Oh my <laughs> god. Dude. Loyal, faceworthy, trustworthy, <laughs> honest, would kill for you, would protect you, would chew for you. Didn't want your wallet. Didn't want your <laughs> didn't want the pin to your key card. Wanted nothing. Didn't want movies. Didn't want jewelry. Wanted your company. And all he wanted to do was protect your dogs. House. Go the dog. Go the blue dogs. <laughs> all he wanted to do was protect your car, your house, and you. The end. And this dog was like 12 weeks old and growled at my dad. My dad got too close to me and he went, this thing, this little 12 week old puppy went, Aah. and it's like, oh my God, you're a keeper. I love this dog. I thought, yeah, I thought he was staying and I was, I got converted, but next minute his bullfed rang up. But anyway, it's local, it's close, it's only at Balloy. So yeah, he got puppy. Wicked. Good for him. Yeah, oh, good for me. Yeah, so I've still got mum, but I'll probably definitely do that again. Wait till it's cold again. Yeah. I don't believe, I don't have puppies in, in when it's hot. Why is that? Just the puppies are hot. Um, the stink of the puppies, the pen, the poo, everything's yep. worse in some of the flies. Okay. Or bad. No, winter, everyone snuggles up. Everything's a lot cleaner. Everything's a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, it's not, winter's usually not the wet season. Okay. So not, not. When dogs running in and outside the house, you haven't got muddy feet everywhere. Yep. It's usually a bit dusty. Yeah. So as long as you keep them warm, and mum tends to snuggle them in. If she's too hot, she'll fan them out. And, not that and how long does it take to kind of like for the puppies to be had, the litter and everything, you know, between the mating? Uh, and... uh, from the mating to when they're had, yep. I think it's, I think it, I actually forgot. I'm hopeless with that. What is it? Three weeks, three days, three weeks. No, it's not that. No, 
I actually can't tell you. Mind blank. I don't know. Yeah. What about that? I don't know. But um, I know we sell them. Definitely. Six weeks is the earliest you could sell a pup, and that's that's if everything's happy and perfect, and if you if the owner's t new owner's totally on it. That's better. That's better. Sorry, dude. I fucking... <laughs> Hopefully, we get that audio there, but we definitely will have from that and the camera. Uh, There's a camera on audio too. Yeah, it does, but it's not that great. I have got a microphone I brought with it. Just as like fail saves, you know, being the yeah. first podcast and stuff. Man. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, it's a good, good little quick setup. All of this just fits in that backpack there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, man. Awesome setup. Yeah. It's pretty high tech for me. Cheers, bro. <laughs> as you can see, I'm a pen and paper man. I don't do. I don't do. Yeah, I don't do computers. But that's as high tech as I've got on my iPhone. I can actually pay bills now. Money. Yep, so you got internet banking set up yep. on there? Nice, yeah. nice. Saves a lot of driving. I, I, the bank got sick of me going in there doing stuff. It's like, why don't you do this on your phone? You don't have to drive here from Kelly. Right, if you show me how, I probably might. So <laughs> she set it all up and I did it. And it's like, is it that easy? She goes, it's done. Oh, it I makes go, life a lot easier, doesn't oh, it? Oh, wow. It's like, douche, 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 pin number, transfer that to there. I'd ask you three times to make sure you got it right. It's all. Oh, I was a dumb one, not the phone. But uh, I was still get anxiety when I'm transferring money or paying a bank card off or anything weird like that. You think it's going to so disappear? If this, if that thousand bucks disappears, that'll hurt. Yeah, it does, eh? <laughs> Do you know much about cryptocurrency? No. Yeah. Is that like bit Bitcoin and all of that? Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. It's getting pretty interesting, man. People are doing some crazy stuff. I don't really know too much about it either. But yeah. No, um, who's in what? Your gamer friends are probably not. Yeah. All oh, these weird bugs. <laughs> yeah. They've come to um, see the shrine, they the see, designer toilet. They want to see the designer dunny and the... The designer dunny. Oh, uh, we're backpacking in the house. No. Oh, I see you butcher, I think. Yeah, I can be going, what are you doing? There was microphones and cameras set up everywhere. Oh, that is a unit you should do a podcast on. Oh, wow. Yeah? Vietnam vet. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, being shot up everywhere. Yeah? Which all he does is kill stuff. He's got red. He's got different energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, he's, uh, he's... Could I handle his energy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, you should line that up there after this. I'll fucking do that for sure, man. I don't know if you do it. I'm going to ask you. Hit him up for me, please. Oh, well. I'd like to do one with your gamer friends too, man, if that's possible. Yeah. Do they live on the coast here? They live at... They live... Um, other side of Vientina. And you say they're albinos? No, they're both out. I just say, oh, from not going outside. Yeah, no, okay. they have been because they never see the sun. Gotcha. I thought you were saying they literally. They used to live in Noosa. <laughs> yeah, they're they're still close. They're only in yeah, Dina Blyblyle or something. Yeah, cool. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So this is obviously becoming a lot more hotter destination for backpackers and everything up in Kenilworth here, hey? Oh, everything. Yeah, our backpackers is more Noosa. Yeah. But they're all spreading out, fanning out here. Yeah. I'm going to do some stand-up comedy at Noosa tonight. Well. Yeah. Are you a stand-up comedy dude? Oh, I've done, I'm starting. I've done like a couple of... This will be my eighth tonight, I think. Eighth stand-up gig. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Getting paid or is it... No, nah, fuck no. Oh. It's like five-minute session. Get up on stage. Tell some jokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, so we're giving that a crack. Yeah. How funny. Yeah, KB's. KB's called Koala Bar. Backpack, yeah. Backpacker Bar in Nosa tonight. Yeah, I know. Well. Yeah. yeah. Should come down one Tuesday, mate. Every every Tuesday they have the open mic there. Yeah. And anyone gets up and has a crack. Oh, yeah, you got to register. Yeah. Um, you're keen to do it. No. <laughs> no chance. 
Yeah, so you just register and they freaking... It's run by, like, a couple of professional comedians. Yeah. And who have just moved to the coast, so they've started a comedy scene here and, yeah. Because it, it, it's difficult to get open mic time. Yeah. Like, there's not all that many spots available and there's a lot of people trying to get those spots that become available, so... Uh. Yeah. Got to jump on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just happy that since moving up to the coast, they've got a couple of spots around. Yeah. Because it's really fun. Like, it's really fun, you know, get up there and you get your adrenaline pump and stuff, man. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it. Wow. It's like, it gives you a high too once if you get some laughs and you do well, man. Like, yeah. But... So we'll see how that goes tonight. I've got to write some new material, but I've been a lazy cunt, so I haven't yeah. done it, man. So I've got some old material that pushed to come to the show. I'll just do that, but I feel a bit like it's a bit boring. I feel like, yeah. I feel like I should write some new stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, funny. You can tell with the influx of people that have got the influx of police presence. Yeah. There's cameras everywhere now. Yeah, I saw that. They're never yeah, yeah, yeah. used to be. That's just for people, probably, yeah, people camping there. That's probably to protect the design of Dunny. Correct. Someone might try to steal that. I don't know how you... <laughs> yeah, Take it apart and put it, put it on the semi and just drive off. Yeah. No one would know. I think everyone would like it gone. Probably, yeah. yeah. It looks out of place, that's for sure. It's just so stupid. But I'm happy for them, whatever. Yeah, that's it. Whatever makes you happy, eh? Yeah. Maybe that's why there's been a, such an influx in Kenilworth on the weekends. Everyone comes here just to see that. Just to see the Dunning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wicked, man. So what are you up to for the rest of the day? Oh, got a list of my other one. I could show you my list. Crikey's. Um, I've got to build a chook pen for the missus, but I, I don't fancy working out in the rain, so that's not going to happen. Yep. I've got to go to Noosa and get some car parts. I um, want to put aircon in the cruiser. Um, oh, I've got heaps to do. God, the, that was the phone call I got. The um, girlfriend's daughter wants to go to, go to Nisha and pick Chloe up. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Yeah, heaps to do. Yeah. Got to take my car, drop my car into other car into mechanics and get it fixed. Yeah. Yep. Right. What do you say we wrap up there? Heaps to do. Yeah, come cool, in. I don't know, I've run, I think I've run out of stuff to say. Thanks very much for coming on, man. No dramas yeah, at all. This that is was fun. Entertaining. Yeah. I can say I've done a podcast now. Fucking hell. On dude. podcast, bro. How's it go? Yeah, you have to stay, stay weird before we leave, dude. Stay like, weird. Stay weird. That's or easy set. for me because I'm born fucking weird and I'm just living. <laughs> fucking I can. Yeah, weird, definitely. Everyone thinks I'm weird. Yeah, I definitely have my weird days. I don't think I'm moody, I'm just fucking weird. <laughs> Life's better when you're weird, people. Embrace it. Stay if weird. everyone wasn't weird, if everyone's the same, it'd be really fucking boring. But no, you've got weird because you just gravitate to the weird people when they're having a good day. When they're having a bad weird day, you just stay the fuck away from them. So that's why I work by myself alone for lots of times. I'm really weird. <laughs> you know, like that fucker off point break. <laughs> There you go. Oh, you just cracked my shell. All good. Yeah, let's wrap it up, G. Later, dude. Later, spray. <laughs>